Hey guys, this is Rainy35, coming at you with another, um, another video here. Uh, today I'm going to show you how I make a knife in my workshop. Uh, this is my workshop, I'll give you a little look around and then we'll get started. A couple of notes though is I'm not going to demonstrate forging in this video um, for two reasons. One, because that takes a lot longer, it adds a lot of time to the preparation time. The other reason is because um, this knife I'm actually going to be doing stock reduction on. Um, so I have the steel already here to the right thickness and I'm going to be uh, mostly doing cutting out and processing and heat treating. Um, so yeah, there won't be forging in this video. Uh, however, I will give you a good look around and I'll explain to you how I got started, what I got first, and what you really need basics, like what your basic necessities are for making knives. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Okay guys, so this is my workshop. Uh, I'll give you a little look around and I'll show you what we're going to be using and then uh, we'll get started. So, uh, first over here actually, this is a table with all of my, my stuff on it. Um, this has lots of, of other, of, you know, swords, the random swords that I have, other projects that I've made and worked on, um, wire, pieces of rod that are very useful for random other things, um, templates, just lots of, this is my everything place. Um, drill, cordless drill, very nice. Uh, okay, over here we have, this is a, an angle grinder. It's a nice DeWalt angle grinder, very nice. Um, this is really great for, this is a cutting wheel on it. Um, and the cutting wheel is great for cutting through, just through the steel. It does exactly what it sounds like. It also has these sanding discs, which are basically little pieces of sandpaper on them that are at an angle. So it rolls against it and you can um, use that to well, you use the, the cutting wheel mostly to cut straight lines through basically anything. Um, and you can use this to, to round off corners, make things flatter, r reduce the thickness of things. We'll demonstrate how that use, is used later. This is my Dremel, um, a happy other flex attachment for the handle, which I find really convenient. Um, I use this for a lot of things. Uh, I can use, there's a smaller cutoff wheel, which is basically a smaller version of the cutoff wheel on this guy, which I can use it for smaller um, applications. Um, I have various diamond tips for engraving, um, grinding stones, little buffs for sanding and finishing later. Uh, the grinding stones are really useful for getting in small corners and rounding them out and making them nice and clean. Um, I can't really show you, well, yeah, okay, so like, things like this guy. Because um, it's really hard to get into small corners with the, with the, the angle grinder, but this little guy can just fit inside and make things nice and clean. Okay, uh, moving on along, toolbox, scrap wood, uh, these are my gloves. Um, this is where I keep my Osage Orange and other kinds of you know, wood that I can just grab when I need. Um, same over there. Um, while we're over here, this is my shelf. Um, I have my finishes and glues up here. Um, this is True Oil. This is the finish I use for most of my wood things. It's really awesome. You should definitely get it. This is Tight Bond 2, which is a really awesome all-round wood glue. Um, kind of like Elmer's, but a lot stronger. Awesome. I use that for bows a lot. Um, and then these are two that I got um, that I've really grown attached to. This is um, by Smith & Company. Um, yes, yeah, Smith & Company, Richmond, California. Um, this is a two-part two part epoxy glue. It's the hands down the best wood glue I've ever found. Um, I'll demonstrate how we use it later, but it's awesome. And this is a clear penetrating epoxy sealer. Really great. It seals things. Um, good for attaching cloth to things like when I'm making bows. Um, awesome stuff like that. Down here I have all my abrasives. So I have sand sanding belts, um, random other attachments, sanding blocks, various kinds. Sandpaper, grit's going from 40 up to 220 and up to actually 1,000 down at the bottom. This is stuff, okay? Uh, down here I have random other things. Spare vise, some other, some other steel stock. Um, this is a little sharper thing we'll demonstrate later. Very handy, dandy. I'll tell you about that more about that later. Here's some little files, some bigger files, pliers, ruler. Very useful, has a lot of different um, units on it. These are calipers, uh, which are awesome. Definitely get a caliper at some point. And these are all drills and drill bits um, and stuff. Down there I just have random pieces of metal that I've cut off and don't use, um, that I don't need for the actual knife, and I use these to practice on. 
So, you know, if I want to practice out of polish, or if I want to practice engraving something, this is what you use. Um, because, like, you know, you always, whenever you try technique, you should always try it out first. Uh, because you don't know how it'll go. And I was always like, well, where do I practice on? And then I realized, oh, I have all these little bits of metal that I keep cutting off of things. And so I just save them down there and I use them to experiment on. So I do stuff like, you know, uh, practice engraving things on. So that's a copper inlay. Um, on here I've done a bunch of stuff. I've just tried all sorts of random stuff on it. So, yeah. Really good thing to get in the habit of doing. These are boards, random extra boards. Um, I use them for a lot of things. This guy we'll see a lot of use later. I'll explain why. Okay. This is my main workbench. Um, this is a knife I just got done making. So we'll be comparing some things to that later. It's a little sheath. Um, little exacto knife, very handy dandy. Okay. This though is the basics of what you need, need, need to make blades. Um, first of all, you need some metal. Um, if you are really doing this on the cheap, um, my advice is to go out to like a junkyard or a U-Haul it or you pull it or whatever, you know, find, and go find the old cars, um, because a lot of the old cars have really high carbon steel suspension springs on them, and you can look up, make some models and figure out what kind of steel they are, and you can pull those and get, like, a whole bunch of, you know, high carbon steel or tool steel for really cheap, and then experiment on that. This is, though, the other option, though, is to order, um, blanks or uh, stock from a supplier. I'll give you guys the website of the supplier I used for this. Um, this is the same kind of steel I ordered for to make this knife out of. I just had some left over, so I'm going to use that for um, my new culinary knife. Um, this is... So the first thing you need is stock. second thing you need is a vise. You must have a vise. Go out and get a heavy machinist vise. Bigger, the better. I'll, you'll see why later. But, you know, you really need a vise on a sturdy table that won't move when you use it. Um, also, your next minimal tools are some good files. Um, I have here a flat, I have here a round, I have a bunch of other over there, but these are the two you really need to have. And theoretically, between these two files and this vise and, you know, some sandpaper, you could make an entire knife by hand. Um, getting a, actually, well, getting a hacksaw blade wouldn't hurt either, but I'll show you that later as well. Uh, the next, the first power tool you should really think about getting, um, besides a cordless drill if you don't have one already, is a uh, belt sander. And you just kind of... It's just basically sandpaper on a belt that spins around really fast. You can take it on, take it off really easily. And this is really, really, really useful. You can use it for flattening things, for cutting into angles, for sharpening. Lots of stuff. Uh, for both woodworking, as you can see with all the wood sawdust here from the Osage Orange I was working on before, and for steel as well. So that's the first one I got. It really is really helpful. Definitely recommend it. Over here I have a bench grinder, uh, which I used for removing stock in some case. I'm not sure I'm going to need it that much for this particular knife, but it's really useful for getting into tight corners and, and really fighting things off. This is a drill press I made for my cordless drill. Um, yes, so you can find instructions on that. I used a guide on instructables.com. You can go look it up and find it your own. Um, otherwise, you can always go get an actual drill press. Um, this is a book I highly recommend for anyone who's getting into bladesmithing. It's called The Complete Bladesmith, Forging Way to Perfection by Jim Hersoulis. I think it's Dr. Jim Hersoulis, anyway. Um, this book has a lot of awesome stuff in it. We'll get into good, um tells you about forging, about steels, about heat treating, about grinding, about final grinding, about sharpening, about making grips, putting them on, um, and also some random other stuff like um, how to use bone and treat that and how to do scrimshaw, which I'm not really sure why that has to do with knives, but anyway. But the, you know, the rest of the information on there makes it worth it. Also some leather working information, so really great all-around thing. Um, with just the information here, you'd be good enough to make you know, that'd be good for you to make a knife of some kind. Uh, there's my trash can, my power supply, random thing for burnable cardboard, and this is a, um, a plastic barrier to keep everything, the dust from getting on everything. Um, also, just to get your, kind of give you a sense of um, perspective or something, this is the first knife I ever made from scratch. Um, it's a nice little ugly little thing, little Tonto Edge. Um, 
awesome knife though. <laughs> I mean, it's a little crap. It has these little cracks in it. Not very pretty. It's kind of ugly. You know, it doesn't have really any finish worth saying, but it stays sharp for a while and I can resharpen it and it's a great use of knife. So I use this all the time. Um, but you know, so you don't have to get something like this on your first try. This is, this is, this took me a while to get to, but you know, nice little thing to start off with. Pretty easy project. Um, you can definitely do it. Okay. Um, and I think that pretty much covers it for now. So let's get started.